Namaste, angels. This is the weekly general reading for the period of Sunday, July 26th through Saturday to come, April 1st. Thank you for joining, uh, subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, all the many things that you do to support me. I wish it was not necessary because I find the system you know, the, of the algorithms so stupid, um, but unfortunately it is. And just to give you an idea of how stupid it is, um, this week... The most recent reading that I did, the Cancer New Moon, the second Cancer New Moon reading that I've done. So it's Cancer New Moon 2 because we had a, a Cancer New Moon at the beginning of the month. And then we had the Capricorn Full Moon, the Buck Moon, and then we had another uh, Cancer New Moon at the end of the month. It's a fairly rare uh, occurrence for a uh, new moon to occur in the same zodiac sign twice in one month, but it did occur. Uh, this is the this is the year of twinning, right? Everything is in twos, and so we had two Cancer new moons, and we have the uh, the North Node, uh, the true North Node in the sign of Gemini or the sign of the Twins, or represented by Roman numeral two, right? So um, that's what this year is all about, and so it, it, we're seeing it all over the place. So I did do another Cancer new moon video, and. Um, and that video has 1,700 views in two, in two days. It had 1,700 views on YouTube, which I'm thankful for. However, uh, in the link where I shared it on Facebook had over 3,300 to so 3,300 likes at the time that I you know, saw it and noticed it. Um, so I'm like, wait a minute. So over 3,000 people liked the fact that I had done a video but didn't actually click on it <laughs> to, to even watch it for a second that's weird i think something's wrong with youtube's numbers again and i see this a lot with my with the numbers going up and down like my views my likes um all that kind of stuff but the, the facebook thing you know it doesn't lie so people like the like your post or they don't right so over three thousand people like my post but they didn't actually click the video that doesn't make sense to me so i think it's youtube so um, I do probably more than other people need and appreciate uh, all the stuff that you guys do, the liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. A lot of times I don't even get to see the comments, unfortunately. I don't know where the hell they go. Some of them were in spam, but some of them, I can't see them on the actual video. But if I go into you know, like the comment area, behind the scenes comment area, it says like comments that you haven't replied to. And I'm like, well, where are they though? Like on the actual video. So it's crazy. I've been trying to reply to those though as well. So if you get a comment from me, if you get a reply from me and you commented a month ago, I apologize, but that's what's going on. Um, saying all that to say, please continue with all you do. Um, I do appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button hit the bell button so that you can hopefully get notifications, hit the share button, share the video, sharing is caring, comment, let me know what you think, ask me any questions. I try to answer any and all comments on my videos um, if, if they actually let me see them. Um, so we have that. All right, so the first, I'm gonna get right into the video. The first um, day that we're gonna talk about is the first day for which this reading is, the 26th of July. That's the feast day of Saints Joaquin and Anne. So I looked uh, quickly and I didn't really see anything that I wanted to tell you about from the computer because a lot of it is um, based on Christianity and the Bible in its current versions. So there are over 100 versions of the Christian Bible uh, that they follow, but that tends not to include like the lost and, and or removed books of the Bible. And there are some that exist. There were about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so those include uh, information on her parents, whereas the other Bible, uh, the, the Bible that, of the other Bibles, right? The other hundred some odd Bibles, there's like 137 um, some odd Bibles that people use or either, you, know, you find around the, the average Christian home does not include the story of Saints Joaquin and Anne. Now, similar to Jesus, uh, Joaquin has a name that begins with J. So his name probably wasn't actually Joaquin, or at least it wasn't spelled that way. Uh, similar to how uh, Abraham is Ibrahim. Um, and we'll talk more about Ibrahim, I'm sure, as we get into the Muslim calendar this month or the Hebrew calendar in a moment. Um, they both that both of those are Abraham. So I'm sure Joaquin is no different. He had a different name, probably, and may have even had a different name. Who knows? Um, 
Mary definitely had a different name in the Muslim uh, books, as well as the old Torahs. Her name is Mariama, not Mary. So you guys get what I'm, get my point. So anyway, I'm just going to tell you off the top of my head what I know about Saints Joaquin and Anne, and you can look it up and verify it or not. Um, try the lost books of the Bible. So St. Anne and Joaquin uh, were a Palestinian couple, or they lived in Palestine. That's when um, Mary was born. She's, well, yes, yeah, she's a Palestinian, Palestinian Jew. And Anne was said to be like past menopause and still wanted a baby, still praying for a baby. The town laughing at her, really laughing at Joaquin, like, what kind of man are you? You couldn't even produce a baby by now. And, you know, so they were sad, but they remained very devout um, religious people, not Christians. They weren't devout Christians. Christianity didn't exist, right? Because Jesus hadn't been born yet and hadn't come yet. And even once he did, Christianity is a man-made thing. Jesus was not a Christian. He was a Jew, a Palestinian Jew, like his mother. And... Um, he was Christed, right? Christ means anointed. So he was Jesus of Nazareth who was anointed or Christed. So they started calling him Jesus Christ. And then from there, people made up the name Christians and separated people the same way race was invented because uh, we all come from the same peoples. We all are descendant from the same one woman even. Um, science dictates from East Africa. Right. And Bill Nye, the science guy, actually this week <laughs> explains uh, in a TikTok video why we're all different colored, but we're all from the same race, right? the human race. So this was the same thing with religion. There was one religion or, or one God. Not really. There was no religion. There was one God and different ways of wor worshiping that one God before people invented Christianity. OK, so. Um, so Joaquin and Anne, they, they pray to this one God, right, that, in which they believe. And um, they say, God, if you give us a child, we will give that child over to the church, like to serve you. We'll, or, you know, I'm using the word church. We'll give that, ch that child over to serve you. Um, it'll be raised in uh, the practices that we believe in, which is basically service to you. God says, okay, he says this, maybe, maybe verbally, I, I, you know, <laughs> some of us can, can hear and see things like that. Um, but he at least says it by impregnating Anne, or at least this is the belief, right? So Anne gets pregnant, even though she's already past menopause or believed to have been past menopause. And she has a daughter. She raises that daughter till the daughter is about three. And then she hands it over to like the equivalent of a convent to be raised by the, you know, the other, the more religious people, the sages. Uh, they raise her until she's a preteen, give her back to her parents. She um, is visited by Gabriel, uh, Gibrael, right? Uh, <laughs> Ray, um, who... Puts for puts to her, hey, you're gonna, you know, this is what this is what God has planned for you. Your mother gave you, or your parents gave you over, right, to the church. So this is what they have planned for you. Um, and then she agreed to it. She let let it be done to me as you have said. And she got pregnant around 14. And that's what she that that's the story. <laughs> that's the story of Anne and Joaquin. So they are the patron saints of grandparents. Um, I think Anne is also the patron saint of women in labor and childbirth. So anybody experiencing anything with that, wanting to, you know, um, connect with an ascendant master, um, you know, an, an ancestor, maybe you want to, an ancestor, <laughs> maybe you want to call upon Saint Anne. Also, speaking of grandparents, in that um, Cancer New Moon video that I just t talked about, um, with the weirdness with the disparity with the views and stuff, in that same video, 
not with the cards, but prior to me doing the cards in my shuffling, I had seen this card, the white Buffalo calf woman about three, three, four times in reverse. So those of you who are familiar with my channel, my cards, my reading, you know that when I pull that card or when I see that card, period, it means death, literal death, people pass away. Uh, and I can often sort of pinpoint who, um, you know, down to female or what type of female I've done the profession. Sometimes I've said like teachers are going to, so, you know, I, depending upon what, what I'm, what I'm given, right. What comes through psychically, intuitively, however you want to put it. So in this particular reading, and you guys can go back and listen to it for yourself and watch, um, to, to verify it. I said, um, because it was in reverse, that I definitely felt that the death was going to still happen, especially since I had seen the card so many times as I was shuffling on my own and stuff before I started the video, but that, um, I felt that for the most part, these were going to be deaths like maybe of celebrities or people otherwise on the national and or global stage for whatever reason, um, that, you know, to whom we didn't have like in a humanitarian way, like it's our, you know, it'll tug on our heartstrings as human beings, maybe. Um, but that we didn't, we wouldn't necessarily have a personal connection to these losses. Obviously somebody has a personal connection to these losses, but I didn't feel that those watching my videos necessarily would. And I said that if you do, however, it'll probably be like, you know, maybe a grandparent, but somebody who has lived a long, full life is what I'm feeling. And maybe even more specifically female, um, who has lived a long, full life. And then I did learn of some passings of people's like grandmothers and great aunts and stuff like that. I think even somebody just commented tonight, um, on an, a woman, older woman that had passed, but there's also been some celebrities male, um, also who had long, full lives. Um, some civil rights leaders that had long, full lives that have also, um, passed away. So I'm saying all this to say, um, we're also lucky in speaking about, I'm going to, in a moment, I'm going to start with the cards and we have an overall energy of strength in reverse and strength in reverse in the traditional sense of the tarot can be about the need. And, you know, from the general reading it from a general perspective can be about the need to like count your blessings, be appreciative of what you have, um, thankful and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I think we're in, we live in a unique time right now where prior because of the human lifespan, you know, and, and science wasn't as, um, um, you know, at the heights that it is now, I couldn't think of the word. I couldn't get the word that I was uh, trying to pull out of my mouth out. But we, with all the improvements to science um, that also led to increased lifespans for human beings, we have uh, a very unique time right now where we've got about four different generations of people simultaneously alive. And how awesome is that for humanity? So we as individuals may not have our grandparents. I don't have mine anymore, but I was fortunate enough to have um, my grandparents with the exception of one grandfather, the, the, the native one. Um, I didn't have him, the Cherokee one, but I had um, my father's, um, both my father's parents and I had my mother's mother and my mother's grandmother. So my great grandmother, even got to meet like my oldest child who's now 27 um and and even babysit him for me you know so those things are very very special and some of you still have your grandparents you still have your great grandparents you have your parents um, i'm fortunate to have my parents as well both of them and so um that means my kids have their grandparents too and they're grown like i just said my son's 27 my daughter's 24. My youngest is 18. And so we should be using this opportunity to talk to these people. We should be using this opportunity to allow, right, the young people to, to thrive and strive and to accomplish any and every goal that they want to. We should be encouraging them and keeping up, helping them to keep up their motivation. And then they should be looking to the older generations, which they're fortunate to have, right? 
you know, the experience of and the wisdom of to absorb as much as they can. You know, so if you're a Gen Z, like my youngest, um, my middle one is like on the borderline. She's like between a Z and a millennial, like that, that year that's, that's the border. Um, but you're, you're a Z, you should be, you know, learning from the millennials, learning from the X's, learning from the boomers if you can. How fortunate are you to have that opportunity um, and vice versa? Right. So the boomers should be learning from the millennials, too. And millennials should be I mean, from the X's, too. And X's from the millennials and millennials from the Z's. And, you know, and all of us will be learning from each other. So I, I, I'm getting all of this. If you have an opportunity to spend time with older people, you're still fortunate enough to have your parents, your grandparents, great aunts, great uncles, um, people who represent those sort of um, people in your life. Right. Mother figures, father figures um, and Maybe it's because also of the cancer, um, the mercury and cancer. This is the, this should be the last week of actually mercury and cancer. It had been retrograde there for a while. Mercury, the ruler of the signs of Gemini and Virgo, had been retrograde for a while. It's still there. I believe it enters Leo on the 4th of August. So that's like early next week, maybe like next Wednesday or something. But um, we just had, again, the new moon in cancer. Um, the sun just recently left cancer and entered Leo. So all of that cancer energy, again, it's about family and um, restoring, going through different things with family, whether it's severing ties or restoring bonds. And I'm just feeling all this stuff about also taking advantage of um, the opportunity to the very fortunate opportunity, very unique opportunity to learn from one another. So I don't know if that's for somebody specific or that's for all of us, but I had to get that out. The next um, feast day from the like uh, theological calendars uh, is coming from the Jewish calendar. It is the feast day of Tisha B'Av. Um, this is the day that it's also called the ninth of Av. And it is a day on which several times throughout history, the same day, um, but different years, from B.C. through A.D., different points, um, horrible things occurred on this day. So we're going to learn a little bit about that uh, from www.shabad.org. Tisha B'Av, the 9th of Av, um, which this year is on the Gregorian calendar, July 29th through 30th, is the saddest day on the Jewish calendar on which we fast and deprive ourselves and pray. It's the culmination of the three weeks, a period of time during which we mark the destruction of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. 1313 BCE, which also is the year, by the way, that Moses passed away. Um, Moses, is, uh, Moses, whose name is represented in Gematria by the number 613, which equals 19, died in 1313. Um, this also occurred in 1313. The spies returned from the promised land with frightening reports and the Israelites balked at the prospect of entering the land. God decreed that they would therefore wander in the desert for 40 more years. And you can read more about that. That's like one of the first occurrences uh, on this day that was sad. And then uh, later, both holy temples in Jerusalem were destroyed on this date. The first temple was burned by the Babylonians in the year 423 BC, and the second temple fell to the Romans in 70 CE or AD, unleashing a period of suffering from which our nation has never fully recovered. The this is another event now, separate event. The Bar Kochba revolt against the Romans in the year 133 CE or AD ended in defeat. The Jews of Batar were butchered on the 9th of Av and the Temple Mount was plowed one year later on the same date. Later in our history, many more tragedies happened on this day, including in 1290, the expulsion of England's Jews, and in 1492, banishment of all Jews from Spain. 1492 is also the year that Spain sent Christopher Columbus out here, and you know, um, so it was terrible for a lot of people, not just the Jews that were there, but I, I, dare I say the Native Americans um, as well, the indigenous people all over the world. Um, so 
it's a, this ninth of Av is observed by fasting for one thing. Um, here's a list of things that we don't do on the ninth of Av. Eat or drink, wear leather footwear, bathe or wash ourselves, apply ointments or creams, engage in marital relations or any form of intimacy, sit on a normal height chair, study the Torah except for the sad parts and the destruction of the temples and stuff. We don't send gifts or even greet one another, although we can respond to greetings. We don't engage in outings, trips, or similar pleasurable activities, and we don't wear fine or festive clothing. So it's you really meant to, you know, you're meant to look sad, feel sad, like be in a, a time of mourning. Starting from midday on the 8th of Av, we limit our Torah study to um, the few allowed topics that are of that are sad in nature and, and pertain to the the temple's destruction. We eat a square meal in the afternoon before services. Then late in the afternoon, a separation meal is eaten. It consists of bread and hard boiled eggs dipped in ashes accompanied by water. This meal is eaten alone, sitting on a low stool. So it's, it's really like feeling like you're on punishment. The meal must be over by sundown when all the laws of Tisha B'Av take effect. The evening services are held in the synagogue where the ark has been stripped of his decorative curtain and the lights have been dimmed. Evening prayers are followed by chanting of lamentations. Morning prayers are held without like the decorative garments that they would normally wear um, to the temple um, because these are considered adornments. Most of the morning is occupied by reading elegies marking the various tragedies that befell the people. Work is permitted, but discouraged. Um, one's focus should be on mourning and repentance. If one must work, it's pre preferable to begin after midday. It's customary to give extra charity on this day, um, as, on every, as it is on every fast day, actually. After midday, it's permissible to sit on normal chairs, normal height chairs, and to wear the you know, adornment, the garments, during the afternoon prayer. In the synagogue, the ark's curtain is restored to its place before the afternoon prayers. And many communities have the custom to clean the house and to wash the floors after midday in anticipation of the redemption which we await. So then it, it turns around to looking forward to something after you spend time recognizing the, um, the dark things that occurred. Many important details and laws about this. They have some books listed here. Um, one is called Order of the Day, and one is called What to Expect at Tisha B'Av Services, if anybody's interested in that. It goes on to talk about what happens after the fast. I'm going to skip that and go on down to, um, well, I'll go ahead and read it. When the night falls before breaking the fast, one should perform hand washing, this time covering the entire hand with water, but without reciting the blessing. It is also customary to perform Kiddush Levana at this point, celebrating the rebirth of the moon and our hoped for national rebirth. So I'm, I guess I'm glad I mentioned that because it's talking about the moon and we're going to go into um, the Islamic celebration and recognition uh, feast day for this week in a minute. That too surrounds the moon. The temple was set ablaze on the afternoon of the 9th of Av and it was burned through the 10th. Therefore, the restrictions of the nine days, such as not eating meat, swimming, or laundering clothing or anything, extend until midday on the 10th of Av. The joy within the sadness. Even as we mourn, there is an element of joy and comfort. Indeed, the reading of the Ika includes with the verse, include, concludes rather, with the verse, quote, Restore us to you, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old, end quote. There is also a custom among many to use flimsy paperback knot booklets, hoping that they will not be needed the next year. So it's like, you know, let's use a book that we don't really, that it's not valuable. We don't consider it valuable. So we can discard it next year if, if the temples have been replaced and restored and we've been, we've been restored to you know, our glory as like God's children, not um, in banishment and exile. It is by no accident that the scripture refers to this day as Ma'ed, a holiday of prayer and repentance is not said today. 
May the time soon come when we look back with the clarity and hindsight to see how all of our suffering was but a prelude to the happiness and goodness with the coming of the Messiah. Amen. Because again, in Hebrew, a Jewish custom, uh, Jesus was not the Messiah. He was, um, many believe him to be a prophet, similar to, or to have been a prophet. Um, some don't recognize him at all. There are Jews for Jesus who do recognize him as the Messiah, but for the most part, um, they do not. He was a prophet at best, according to them, uh, similar to Muslims or, you know, in Islam, Jesus is also recognized as one of the highest, you know, um, prophets that there was, but a prophet, you know, not the Messiah. Okay. So speaking of Islam, we're going to talk about the Hajj now. Um, this year, it is from July 28th through August 2nd. What is the Hajj? Well, um, just to quickly, it's an annual, annual pilgrimage to Mecca in Saudi Arabia, it's the, um, which is the holiest city that exists for um, Muslims. The pilgrimage lasts around five to six days, depending upon the lunar Islamic calendar, and is mandatory for Muslims to complete at some point in their life. Um, if you at all have the like wherewithal to do it, so like you're physically able-bodied and you got the, you know, you can come up with the money as a Muslim, you must make at least, you must make the Hajj or, um, so a, the pilgrimage, the annual pilgrimage, you must participate at least once in your life. Um, of course, if you're able to do it more than that, then you should. Um, for the end of the Hajj, that's when Eid al-Adha occurs. Although one, it doesn't, isn't necessarily supposed to be dependent upon that. Like Eid al-Adha is based on, um, I think this is based on the moon too. It just happens to fall, if I remember correctly, um, after the Hajj but they aren't directly um, connected or correlated. In any case, I, for this, I've gone to, I'm not talking to you off the top of my head. I've actually brought something up on Britannica.com. So Britannica, the people that used to make the uh, encyclopedias when I was a kid, like, you know, people with, with a few dollars, a little money, maybe middle class and up families, you know, with, we had encyclopedias in our house and we had to go look stuff up now, you know, like before computers and going online. So I don't even know if anybody's familiar with Britannica, but that's who they used to be, at least. Uh, in any case, Eid al-Adha, or the festival of sacrifice. This is interesting because we just talked about sacrifice and sadness with the Jewish calendar, too. Um, and they have um, several different spellings of this, you know, in different parts of the world. It's spelled one way, another way, whatever. Um this is the second of the two great Muslim festivals, the other being Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Adha marks the culmination of the Hajj or the pilgrimage rites at Mina, Saudi Arabia, near Mecca, but is celebrated by Muslims throughout the world. As with Eid al-Fitr, it is distinguished by the performance of communal prayer or Salat, a daybreak or at daybreak rather on the first day. It begins on the 10th of Du al-Hijjah, the last month of the Islamic calendar. And it continues for an additional three days, though the Muslim use of the lunar calendar means that it may occur during any season of the year. During the festival, families that can afford to sacrifice a ritually acceptable animal, sheep, goat, camel, or cow, do so. And then they divide the flesh equally among themselves the poor and friends and neighbors. Yeah. It's like uh, you, you keep a third for yourself. You give a third away to like loved ones. So yeah, friends and, and neighbors and, and other family members and stuff. And then the last third is to be given to those less fortunate. So that's what, that's what they mean by that. Eid al-Adha is also a time for visiting with friends and family and for exchanging gifts. So maybe this is why I was feeling the thing about the friends and family too. It's happening to it happens to fall into this period of cancer um, energy that we're, that we're dealing with right now. Adha is also a time for visiting um, with friends and family. And this festival commemorates the ransom 
with a ram of the biblical patriarch. Yes, Ibrahim. Okay, I was I was wondering where this part was going to come up. Um, and that's what I was trying to remember when I said this. It's two separate things. Like one was triggered by another event. It was triggered by this event with Abraham or Ibrahim um, and his son Ishmael or Ismail. Um, when Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son, that's on what this is based so it commemorates with that. That's the purpose of sacrificing an animal. And um, I left out, because I was doing it off the top of my head, with the Hajj, there's a bunch of stuff that relates to the number seven, like if the Jew thing seven times. Um, in Islam, in supreme math, in numerology, in angel numbers, and perhaps in other numerical languages that I don't know, uh, the number seven represents God. So that's why that's important. I'm just mentioning it because it just came up in my mind. So like intuitive message, and maybe we're going to see um, some seven, a lot of seven popping up. Or again, um, twos, because two has been uh, this year's number, right? Twinning. Lastly, on the planetary calendar, nothing to talk about or celestial calendar, um, but two things to mention, both of which occur on July 27th, one at 8.32 a.m., the quarter moon, four degrees Scorpio. And then also on the 27th, later that day at noon at 12.07 p.m., Jupiter, which is currently located and retrograde in Capricorn, will be sextile Neptune which is currently located and retrograde in Pisces. So both of those planets, Jupiter and Neptune, will both be at 20 degrees. Um, and then Jupiter will be 20 degrees Capricorn and Neptune will be 20 degrees Pisces. And that is it. So let's get to the dice. We're beginning with no. Eat cake. Maybe somebody's celebrating something. Happy birthday to the Leos that are celebrating this week. Stay in bed. Spirit says, try again. So maybe two, like again, twinning two times, second time around, second chances. Could be what the try again is. Um, the strength card in reverse can be about um, like lacking confidence, maybe. So maybe like at first you don't succeed. Try, try again. If you don't get that strength up and get the confidence up to take some sort of initiative or do something, try again. Uh, still eat cake. So again, um, celebrations and stuff, perhaps. And lastly, weekend away. Going to the cards. I have found over the past couple of weeks, it's been easier to rather than pull up, pick, pulling them one by one to pull them all and then talk about them. So for the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, your card is the two. I just talking about the twos, the two of wands in reverse. Very nice. Two of wands, of course, the soulmate or divine union or twin flame card of the tarot. Um, Next week, speaking of that, of soulmates and stuff, this week we did the 9th of Av. Next week we'll talk about the 15th of Av, which is actually Soulmate Day on the Hebrew calendar, a tradition started long, long ago by King Solomon. Um, yeah, and you, you heard it here, right? I'm the one that talks about that. Nobody else talks about that. Um, they, they might now, since they like to do what I do, but... <laughs> This, that's, that's where you guys learned it. Um, for you earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, the five of pentacles in reverse. So if you're going to get the five of pentacles, better it should be in reverse than upright. Um, since it's about feeling, you know, again, we already have the, the strength in reverse, which can be about lacking confidence. This is being fearful too, afraid of lack of different forms, um, air signs. So my, so my fellow Gemini's, uh, Libra's and Aquarians, our card is the six of cups also in reverse. And, um, for you cancers, 
Scorpios and Pisces, your card is the Seven of Swords, upright. So you're the only one that got an upright card. And Gemini and, or Gemini, air and water. Oh, isn't this interesting? We got the water card and you got the air card or the sword. We got the cups and you got the swords. Um, but the air signs and the water signs are the only two of the four that didn't get a card in their own element. The fire signs did and the earth signs did. All right, so again, for everybody, our overall energy is Major Arcana card Strength in Reverse. Oh, okay. The Ace of Swords also in reverse behind it. I don't know, I feel like this is about Mercury, but is Mercury still in... Cancer? I think it is. I think it goes into Leo next week also. I think this is tied to Mercury and maybe it's in reverse. This is funny. Okay. Uh, I, I think I'm onto something. Yeah. Um, this is about Mercury and it's in reverse. It, it has something to do with Mercury um, leaving Cancer and entering Leo which is represented by the strength card um, and occurs next week. I believe the fourth is when, um, if I remember correctly, when Mercury goes into um, Leo, leaves cancer. I think at that point, this ace of swords will turn up right. Um, so something is delayed, something is held up. There's something that needs to come out, some sort of clarity or truth or needs to be realized. We have, there's an aha moment waiting to happen um, or something. Ace of Swords in reverse as it relates to love. Somebody may need to hear can be about like getting connected, mixed up, involved with somebody who normally is not your speed, you know, and somebody may even dare say like is inappropriate for you. Um, and it's okay to take a walk on the wild side. If that's what you're in, you know, in the, that's what the vibe you're getting, you're, you know, the guidance you're getting to do, go ahead, just be aware and keep in mind. Um, if this person tells you like, I'm not the, um, you know, I, I don't do well with commitments or relationships. I'm not the relationship type, or I'm only, you know, I'm not here for a, a long time. I'm here for a good time. I have the saying goes, right? Like, believe, if somebody tells you who they are, believe them, basically. Um, not saying that in, anybody that, that shows up um, in connection to this Ace of Swords is going to be that way. But for those that are, um, you know, it might just be for fun. And they may be very honest about it, like, in, you know, which is normal for an air sign to be pretty blunt about stuff. And... If they are, they're like, they're not joking. Like, like believe what they say. Um, but some, again, some, 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 there could be victory, success, some sort of clarity, um, or finally achieving something after maybe some difficulty or maybe like, again, having trouble getting your confidence or your strength up. Then all of a sudden you are, um, maybe as we enter next week. But I feel like, you also have a, a free will choice to make it happen this week. Cause with major or kind of card strength showing up, it's like the strength is available to us, you know? So we just have to decide to use it. We have it. We just got to decide to use it. So you, if you just, if you do decide to use it this week, then you, you know, you'll be empowered and you'll be able to flip that ace of swords over a little bit early. But otherwise I think it's, it's, it, it it happens sort of organically and karmically, maybe, um, again, when Mercury enters Leo. And why I was laughing a moment ago is because also in reverse, oh, this is really funny now, but also in reverse, under the Ace of Swords, which I said was representative of Mercury, was this pentacle, um, page of pentacles, which for me is very Virgo, right? Because I, I tend to attach the pages, although this is not traditional um, in, the, in tarot practice, but I tend to attach the pages to the mutable signs because they are like the more youthful, 
um, and some often young looking and young acting and all that kind of stuff. So this will be Virgo. Mercury is a ruler of Virgo. And then I laughed again because also in reverse, immediately behind the page of pentacles is the page of swords. Mercury rules both Virgo and Gemini, those two mutable signs. So um, something's up there. Again, it, it just, it, it sort of um, substantiates what I was see, saying and feeling. And then the last card in reverse is Major Arcana card, the moon. And we did do a, t a bunch of talking about the moon too. Um, in the Rider Waite deck, this, the moon has this uh, lobster down here, which always, always makes me feel like it's somehow connected to Scorpio. Um, but of course the moon in like real life rules the sign of cancer and in tarot represents the sign of Pisces. Well, we, we are having on the 27th, the quarter moon in Scorpio. So it could be because of that. And then again, we do have that, um, sextile between Neptune, the ruler of Pisces. Well, and Jupiter. So, hmm. I don't know. I'm getting something about that. And then the next card is upright. It's the Ace of Wands. So again, like I said, I think when we transition into this new energy um, into this week or early beginning of next week or sooner, if we make a conscious um, choice to get our, our weight up, <laughs> right, our strength up, um, that's when we get the, this Ace of, of Wands and that's when this Ace of Swords also flips over. So speaking of the Ace of Swords, uh, okay, yeah. All right, these are still in order. Yeah, like that. All right, so um, Fire Signs, you got for your card, like your more personal card, the Two of Wands. And in a general sense, um, that, that um, we just looked at the moon and it can be about like, being in the reality of a moment, you know, uh, seeing a situation for, for what it is. So it could be tied to what I was saying, maybe in love. Also, the two, speaking of love, um, this card can be about being swept off your feet. I put the Ace of Swords in the wrong direction. I put them all in the wrong direction. These are upside down. They're supposed to be upside down. Um... These can both both be about getting, again, swept off your feet, but the Ace of Swords can be about getting swept off your feet by somebody who is sort of like out of the norm and sort of wild for you. So, you know, it's like when you're having that midlife crisis and, <laughs> I don't know, you start driving a Ferrari all of a sudden and people are like, what's going on, right? And, you know, you got the younger person or you're the younger person and you got the older person with you, like something like that, just out of the norm. And it doesn't mean that it can't be a good relationship or that it can't work or it's not a soulmate relationship. The two of wands is a soulmate card, a, a, the divine union card, or the twin flame card of the tarot. Uh, so it could definitely be that, but you guys are just sort of, um, oddly matched, you know, from the outside looking in perhaps. And again, for some that it's going to be a really super good match. And for some, you know, it, it can still be a super good match. If you're honest about what you want, the person is likely going to be very honest um, with you about what it is they're there for. So if you guys can get those to align, it can be a really good time. Maybe. Um, speaking of love, actually both major arcana card strength, which is for all of us in reverse uh, and the two of wands in reverse are good omens as it relates to love. The only thing is with strength in reverse, um, there could be a need to make sure that we are not like bigging up too much, like overestimating the strength of the bond or relationship. So again, see this, but that's only for some. Otherwise, strength, um, just like when it's upright, is a really positive omen in love. And it can become be about deepening of commitments or maybe the beginning of commitments. It's a better time than normal or average to meet somebody if you're single and wanting to do that. And again, the two of wands in reverse can definitely be about being swept off your feet. So moving on to 
the um, earth signs. Again, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Your card is the five of pentacles in reverse. Five of pentacles um, is about that feeling of being left out in the cold, like what it looks like, right? There's a um, an older woman, and maybe this is representative of a grandparent, right? And a child. That could be what I was talking, you know, connected to what I was um, talking about before. Maybe for somebody, there could be some sort of message there. But it's it's that sort of feeling, Um Maybe if you if you haven't seen your grandparent or your grandchild or again somebody that represents one or the other to you and you have an opportunity to reach out could be a really good time for you to do that. Um, maybe they are feeling left out in the cold. Maybe you are feeling like sort of been you've been away from them. Um, you know, so there's distance that you're feeling. But um, if you have been feeling like that like that in a general sense, and whether it has something to do with a grandparent or a grandchild or not the feeling should be dissipating, passing. And again, maybe that's what you're waiting for when I say there's a delay and it's up to you, perhaps, you could decide, okay, I'm done feeling this way. And it's only a five, right? It's the five of pentacles. I'm done feeling this way. I'm going to empower myself. And then again, these would, swip, would flip around for you. And we get that... um ace of wands and ace of swords energy and i've been talking over the past couple of readings too about what it means to have more than one ace it can be about like moving in together um, or with somebody rather cohabitating um uh it, it's obviously it strengthens the abundance that's coming to you it's a really positive omen as well to have two aces in a spread um what else i want to tell you about this yeah just um your confidence should be growing, coming back. Your strength should be coming back. Both of these cards mean that. So things are going to be turning around for you. But you do have the ability to, to help them to by taking advantage of that strength energy. Um, love. Some of you could feel like you've been stuck in a relationship. Something's been like, you felt like something's been... Uh, pulling you back or holding you back from like breaking free and maybe either from a relationship or a situation or from like being single and not doing anything. Like there's a reversal of fortune in this area where you felt sort of down and out and stuck, um, more open to maybe a chance, taking a chance at love, opening your heart, being vulnerable, being, you know, and, and that could be tied to, again, the strength card, which means very positive things as it uh, relates to love on its own. Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Our card is the six of cups in reverse. And it reminds us that we need to stay focused in the present and not get too, and looking ahead toward the future too, and not get too caught up or lost in the good old days, right? We need to live for today. That It can also be a card of family though. So um, maybe we do need to spend some time, we just can't afford to get stuck there, but spend some time, again, maybe talking to people, our ancestors, people that are older than us, our parents, our grandparents, our, you know, aunts, uncles, aunts, uncles, neighbors um, that have something to offer uh, as well. Other than that, live for today in terms of, um, for us, what it can mean in love. There could be some issues that we've been trying to sweep under the rug that have been popping up maybe for a while, like from the past and stuff. And we've just always, you know, managed somehow to avoid them. If you're in a committed relationship and you've been doing that to keep like the peace and stuff, um, it's going to resurface soon and it's going to need to be dealt with. Like you got to you, you can't keep that. Keep doing that. Uh, if you're single. Then. It might be time for us, and this maybe could be difficult for an air sign or for anybody maybe, but maybe specific, particularly for an air sign, it may be time for you to look at yourself <laughs> um, to see what you're doing or not doing to, you know, bring love in your life. Like what you could be doing to keep it out and um, like to block yourself from it which with us could be intentional. But again, you have the strength to turn that around for yourself. And then maybe by next week, uh, those of you or us who are interested in strengthening our relationships and our bonds or, or creating new ones, by next week, maybe we'll be ready to do that. 
Water signs. Seven of swords. Um, if you're in any kind of competition with somebody. Oh, because this is a general reading, so it could be coming. It could be like fairly literal. The cards meaning maybe this week. Um, I'm noticing it is a seven. It's a seven. God. Maybe we should talk about the spiritual meaning for you guys too. But first, I was I started the general. Um, yeah, maybe I don't know if it's at work or if it's something even like less serious, like in a game or whatever. You're playing some sort of game with somebody, they're cheating. If you're in any kind of competition this way, be be alert or aware of the possibility of cheating. Um, yeah, it could definitely be like something funny going on at work too. <sighs> More traditional meaning, um, you your work may be under scrutiny, not because you're necessarily doing bad, but just like the the look, the boss could have like an or superiors or whatever could have like an eye on you this week for whatever reason. Um, so you know, just make sure that you are remaining focused on what you're supposed to be doing and. Um, You know, crossing your, what do they say? Crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Um, if you're in a committed relationship, there could be some sort of issues of trust. I may pull another card for you guys, actually. I mean, I have, I have the love reading coming up after this one. So we'll look deeper into that. But I, I don't know. I just, when I said about the trust, I just felt like a way. I can't really describe. But um, if you are interested in dating or whatever, try to avoid looking like you're not, <laughs> like you're disinterested in everybody and everything in relationships because people will move on if they get that vibe from you. Like, uh, you know, you're not giving me anything back and that can be what, what, what the seven of um, swords mean. It can also mean, speaking of giving something back, that somebody from your past is returning to your life as can the six of cups. And these are close. So maybe we got some cuspians, we got some air signs dealing with water signs and one or the other is planning to return to the other's life possibly. Um, so I talked about the spirituality. It, it warns us to be careful about um, like gurus um, or religious leaders that are going to be asking us for a bunch of money and stuff in order, you know, for them to show us to God, introduce us to God or to enlighten us or whatever, um, like sort of buying our way into heaven and, and stuff like be careful of that this week and keep in mind that you don't even necessarily need a leader, you know, um, I provide spiritual counseling myself as, you know, as part of what I do. So I'm certainly not discouraging people against that. I'm just saying that for everything we're doing, we don't necessarily need a leader. And I do think that there's a difference between, um, you know, seeking counseling and seeking, you know, um, a leader. Like we should be trying to take the lead in our own life, but sometimes we need counseling because we need education. We need understanding. We need a listening ear. Um, all of these things. So there is a difference there as far. Like I said, let me, um, I don't know. Let me pull another card for you. Water sign. <laughs> Interesting. This is that Gemini energy. Like I was saying, I felt Mercury and stuff before. This is kind of like more Mercury. Well, yeah, the magician represents the planet Mercury in the sign of Gemini most directly. And sometimes I do attribute it to the um, mutable signs in general, similar to strength in reverse. This card was in reverse and it's kind of about like you not, um, using all of the tools that you have at hand to manifest what it is you want to. If somebody's looking for a job or something, use your tools. Like if you know somebody that's a supervisor, a managing person, um, a hiring agent or something like, don't be afraid to like network, use whatever tools, opportunities 
would otherwise be available to you. Because the seven of swords, for me, I call it my, um, I say that it represents the energy of, of joy stealing because it's about, yeah, opportunities being, it can be about opportunities being taken away, but because it can also be about lacking confidence as can major arcana card strength in reverse, we can potentially steal our own joy through that lack of confidence or esteem. If we don't step up to the plate, we miss opportunities, right? So we rob our own, we rob ourselves when we do that. I'm being greedy. Yeah, it's, there's more, um, <laughs> there's more air here for you. So some, so again, some of you may have something going on with the air sign, uh, maybe most specifically a Gemini, or maybe again, some of you are Cuspians, Cancer, Geminis, or Pisces, Aquariuses, or Libra, Scorpios. Um, and if so, you're, you're just being guided to like draw on this air energy it could also be showing up because again gemini um does represent the true north node this year so the gemini energy is strong for whatever reason it's showing up here for you the king of swords is somebody who is uh, a very strong person a uh, very confident person very diplomatic and fair person so he doesn't cheat um he doesn't lie. He might not tell you everything voluntarily, but if you ask him or if he initiates a conversation, he should be the kind of person that says what he means and means what he says. He's not somebody that is easily changed if you're in a romantic relationship with him. So um, you're going to have to accept him the way he is or not. Like don't you know, take him or leave him. And that may be what this is about too. Um, why am I being so greedy? The next card is in reverse. I, I think that that was it. I think that was it. And that those are our messages for the week. I'm going to go ahead and end this one and I'll come back with more details. Maybe, um, not for these cards, but in general, as it relates to our romantic lives, um, <laughs> uh, whether we're single or partnered or in separation or haven't met, you know, anybody of, of any real interest or depth yet. I'll come back with a love reading for all of the above and we can dive a little deeper into this stuff. All right. Thanks again for liking, sharing, commenting. If you need a service, all of that description is going to be in the description bar. Not yet a subscriber, please consider becoming one by hitting both the subscribe button and the bell button. Thank you again. Namaste.